We're going to call this one Holster Selection Part 2. Part 1 talked about what was important to me when it comes to a holster. Comfort, concealability, retention, the ability for the holster to keep the weapon in place until you needed it. It's got to be comfortable. If it's not comfortable, I don't think you're going to wear it all the time. When you need to have a gun all the time, period. Concealability, can you conceal it? I talked about Safari Land holsters being my favorite, and I talked about how I love the Safari Land Duty holster, and I thought I wouldn't be wearing that anymore. And just as I got into bed last night, I looked over and I said, wait a minute, is that a case of, of Safari Land holsters that, with paddles and concealment? And does it actually say Safari Land concealment holster right on there? There's even another one over here. I got there. Uh, Safari Land's great stuff. If you don't own $5,000 worth of it, I don't know who you are or what you're doing. So the holster's gotta be comfortable, concealable, it's got to be secure, meaning it's holding on, retaining the weapon as you go about your everyday life. I see a lot of guys practicing their draw stroke. Important to practice your draw stroke, important to dry fire. I look at some draw strokes and I think, God, I'd like to train with that guy. A lot of people doing in the waistband, appendix carry. I can, I got a big roll there. There's a fat guy holster out there, I might try that. But I see a lot of people going for that holster using both hands. You know, in a critical incident, at least in my experience, Something's happened. If I missed the ball, if I haven't anticipated what's coming, I might have to use this hand to defend what? My computer. I don't want anybody to hit me in the head, control, alt, delete. So I should probably want to learn how to scoop this shirt up with one hand. How do you do that? You have your thumb surgically modified like I've had mine done. Look at that. I can hook this shirt while protecting my computer, clear the shirt away, get that weapon, bring that weapon up, and engage. Never thought about that, did you? Have your thumb surgically altered to look like that. If you're wearing a blazer like I was earlier today, you can weight the pocket. Just a little bit of change in there that help you swing that jacket out of the way so you can present that firearm either left or right-handed as you may carry. I'm going to be careful on this next part. I don't want to get anybody in trouble in your locale. Where I live in Arizona, there's not a brandishing law. And as I talked about in the car video, I think it's very important to anticipate problems ahead of time, to be on the lookout for them. I don't want you to be paranoid. I want you to really be paranoid. I don't want you to be worried about everywhere you go. But no, seriously, as you go about your day, if you see something that's not right, you get that feeling in the back of your throat, back of your neck, the hair goes stands up, or like me, the hair on the side of your face stands out. Trust that instinct. Don't go there. Avoid that place. Go to the next convenience store. Go to the next parking lot. It's not a big pain in the butt. I've had to do what I like calling cheat. I anticipate trouble. I draw ahead of time. I call it a surreptitious draw. I have some small firearms and I got some big hands and I can conceal a firearm pretty well. In both instances, neither party knew I had drawn a weapon or had a weapon in my hand when we were de-escalating. So I practice some things like that, some sleight of hand. So you got your holster. You picked them, you brought in your fifth holster, you're finding out what's comfortable, you're practicing your stuff. Let's practice some sleight of hand when we draw too. There's a great video of an off-duty policeman getting robbed in, a, in, a, in a, uh, some type of business where he's in line. And the robber wants his chain, so he takes his chain off and lays it on the floor. Well, as the guy reaches down to pick up the chain, he's able to draw a weapon and engage. Sleight of hand, I carry a second wallet. It's got some of that Hollywood money in it. It's got all kind of crap in it. I can hand the, uh, oops, I dropped that wallet. What's the bad guy's eyes gonna be? They're focused on the wallet. And they're gonna go towards the wallet. What am I gonna do while he's gonna do that? I'm gonna engage and I'm gonna dome him. That's right, folks. I'm gonna put one right in his melon and some in the rest of the body. Probably center mass. So holster selection, don't buy nylon. Don't buy universal holsters. You may have, and like I said in version one, you may have purchased some holsters or excuse me, purchased a gun that wasn't ideal when this big panic buying or preparatory buying occurred. So look at holsters, look at reviews of holsters, go to a police supply store, got them near me, go in there, ask around, look around, see what they've got. But if you're lucky, you got a place that's got trade-ins, they have some trade-in holsters. You have a unique pistol, unique sidearm, Look where I shop every day, VintageGunLeather.com, check them out. Again, John Bianchi, talked about him in the first video, a genius when it comes to holsters. We're going to talk about deep concealment holsters. What's that? That means that I'm going about my day, but I may need a firearm or three. 
I'm not going to tell you how many I carry, but you know, I carry. And I'm going to talk about some other stuff in the next video about holsters.